As a child growing up in Morgadal, Norway, Sandra Norham was known as a snow dancer for his wild antics on skis and his personal nature as a dreamer. A close school friend described him as one who stole the show by fiddling, flirting, and dancing. He dazzled competitions in the growing recreational sport of skiing in the surrounding mountainous terrain. He was inventive, crafting the shape of skis, designing modern bindings, innovating new styles of turns, and becoming an undisputed champion as skiing emerged as a national and later Olympic winter sport. In the mountains and on skis, Sundra knew who he was. He knew his place, but as a father of a family of eight on a tenant farm, he wanted more than anything to own land. His sense of adventure allowed him to give up the mountains he loved, to homestead on the plains of Dakota Territory, three years before North Dakota became a state. When I was a teenager, I knew pioneers that were the age then that I am now, who knew Sandra Norheim as a homesteader in Dakota Territory. My dad was a country pastor who served Norway Lutheran Church in McHenry County for many years and helped discover the unmarked gravesite in the cemetery where Sandra was buried. Homesteading was harsh, winters were brutally cold, and skiing unknown. Being apart from his mountains, he anchored his dream for a better life in his farmstead and with his fellow Norwegians to build the first log Norway Lutheran Church, which later was built of stone and is now a national preservation site. A granddaughter started a genealogy search for Sandra Norheim's gravesite through a letter that ended up in my dad's hands to answer. He conferred with Olaf Nelson, then the cemetery caretaker. There were several unmarked graves, but they narrowed it down to two sites, but couldn't know for sure which one was Sundra's. After a three-day soaking rain, he would drive out to meet Olaf, and they would solve the question. After heavy rain, my dad went to the town's machine shop, got a long section of rebar, used to reinforce concrete, and sharpened one end. At the first unmarked side, they pushed the rebar into the soft soil until it hit a metal casket. At the second site, they did the same, and at the depth of burial, the rebar went into empty space as Sundra was buried in a wooden casket. Once known, the gravesite was dedicated as a memorial. I also heard stories bordering on folklore that Sondra carried the mail on skis 150 miles to Montana one winter of heavy snow. Another was that passing Indians thought he was a ghost as he occasionally floated and danced over the snow at a faster speed than a warrior could run. I visited Norway Church this past September to attend the annual memorial service in conjunction with Hostfest. The Council General of Norway was there with a delegation of Norwegians. I sat in the back row. My mind drifted back in time as if I was a teenager, as if my dad was preaching, as if the pews were filled with the faces of people that I once knew sitting there. At the ceremony by the gravesite, I marveled at the expanse of the countryside and wondered for a moment if his living here with his family was perhaps his greatest challenge as a champion.